اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاه والسلام على رسوله الكريم نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه واله وسلم خاتم الانبياء والمرسلين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي واجعل لي وزيرا من اهلي ماي فيري فيري ديير Dawa Committee, Nasfat Youth Wing, the entire organizing committee, management, president, brother Yusuf, brother Salman, my all uh, very dear participants and attendees of uh, this one-day international seminar on Quran and technology. Uh, please accept my Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, also, please accept my heartiest uh, welcome to all of you to this one-day seminar. and this is an honor to have you all with me on this uh, topic which is very dear to me very close to my heart and i hope inshallah today's interaction will help you inspire and ignite your uh, understanding of quran with reference to the emerging technologies and what should be our conduct uh, in this context so a heartiest welcome to you all the nasfat committee has already welcomed so uh, from my side uh now straight coming to the topic because i think we are a little overrun with the time so why this topic why would i like to talk about it you know uh i'm sure like all of us and you especially those who have joined us today we are all more concerned about uh you know our, our understanding of quran and taking our deen in in a context of the emerging technologies and there are lots of confusions which come up and how to overcome them and how to actually take benefit from these technologies you know in the context of historical developments in the muslim ummah and the way we have reached this day today which i don't need to speak much about we all understand where the ummah stands especially in the context of uh, recent palestinian issue and the way the entire ummah especially our rulers are responding to it so our war with technology has actually taken us back this uh, taking the back seat historically we hear about the fatwa with which with the help muslims to come forward and take the printing press and then even you know at that time probably 100 200 years back it wasn't uh, that an important issue but even today in this world of technology when the islamic scholars speak about you know all the use of speakers tv and internet is uh, not advisable and these are all devil's tools to uh, you know engage you into various worldly activities so you know it gives me shocks the you know the 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 speaker the one who is speaking on a video and is delivering a talk on the internet saying that these are all the devil's tools you know really surprises me uh, i don't know how would you take it but you know the, then on the other hand we see a very sluggish attitude towards emerging technologies the same confusion which is found in the muslim scholarship uh, and the two sides of the traditional and the modernist uh, uh, scholarship of, of the islamic world people like us they are left with you know all confusion and indecisive state of mind what to do should we take it or should we not so you know almost all of us we would love to recite quran on the cell phone but there are lots of questions coming up people repeatedly are ask question do we get the same reward for reciting uh, quran on the cell phone or do i need to still pick up my quran and read it from the the mushaf itself so they remain confused about it so they remain confused about whether you know learning quran from the cell phone is advisable or not so imagine in this world of technology and lots of uh, tools which are there for our ease these questions are there in the mind we are still not clear what to do about these emerging technologies how to use them so then imagine each one of us who is very good at using the whatsapp for the business purposes whatsapp for uh, personal communication whatsapp for sending jokes and getting connected to friends and people around the world whatever at the same time we have apprehension and confusion there are lots of questions about the use of technology for religious purposes uh and we we have to 
you know, think again, because there, there is a good number of scholars who would still believe, you know, online teaching or online learning of Quran is not advisable. That's not the right way and blah, 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 blah. So anyways, uh, quickly coming to, and then, you know, you remember, uh, uh, interestingly, I would like to share a very interesting thing with you. You know, my office is right under Faisal Mosque. Faisal Mosque is, it has been world's one of the largest mosques and now is also a largest mosque of the world. And this is still one of the largest mosques, uh, probably still lists in the last, uh, uh, in the first 10 largest mosques in the world. You know, my outfit, and when I joined the other, I, I remember this was, uh, there, there were lots of captions saying the photography in the mosque is not allowed, no photographs. And I still remember the times years back when the guards, they would even hold your camera and they would tell you to keep it outside or keep it in the bag before you go inside the mosque. So they would become very rigid about it. You know? Imagine now, how many cameras can you hold? Hundreds of, rather thousands of, today I offered my Juma prayer there. Thousands of people come to the mosque every day. They carry their cell phones. Some of them carrying two cell phones at a time and take selfies and, you know, make photographs with both the hands. Now, what would you do about it? Now, what is our take on it? What is our stand on it? How could you stop them all? Where could you keep those cameras? What is our scholarship, our religious scholarship doing about it? There are still those captions making fun of all of us. You know, caption is there, but everybody is using a cell phone. And they are all Muslims. So what are the guidelines for them? So, you know, look at this confusion. Look at this, uh, what should I call it? The, the totally opposite uh, guidelines being given to the, uh, 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 the, the Muslim audience. So we need to put together minds, our minds, and we need to re-evaluate our thinking about the emerging technologies. We cannot stop them you know, this wave of the technology, the, the wiser people would like to regulate them rather than stand against the storm, the, the storm. You cannot do that. You need to actually regulate and check out what are the measures we need to take to make a productive use of them. You know, each one of us finds very productive use of cell phone. I, you know, I travel a lot. So cell phone is always a good device to get me the Kibla direction from wherever I am. Otherwise, I remember I'll get into a hotel and the first thing I have to check and ask is, what is the Qibla direction here? If the mark of the Qibla is not, uh, you know, there, especially in the foreign countries. So anyways, in this context and having faced lots of confusion around, uh, my idea is, and by the way, please uh, let me clarify right in the beginning. I do not, I am not a very qualified mufti or a scholar of religious studies, but uh, probably a normal Muslim like you who is concerned about uh, the condition of the Ummah and, you know, more concerned about uh, the way we are progressing in the field of knowledge and wisdom and, you know, technologies. Uh, because Allah has made a very special distinction in Quran. Can those who know and those who do not be equal? So I'm more concerned, how could we stand in the community of uh, uh, you know, the global nations as an ummah with knowledge and wisdom and to come at par, rather go beyond that. So with that uh, context concern in mind, I've come up with the idea that we need to go to the Muslim youth and Muslim uh, publics and introduce to them what technologies are there and how could we use them for the productive use of ourselves and of the ummah and what should be our contribution for the upcoming technologies. Uh, I've listed some of them. Of course, there are many. It's becoming an end endless list now. And I've taken some of those popular ones, uh, uh, you know, on priority. Uh, you know them. I, I'm not going to get into detail of all of them because uh, my, my, my focus would remain, you know, connecting them to the Quran and getting an idea of what Quran says about it. So artificial intelligence recently, you know, it's not a year even. And the artificial intelligence chat GPT is coming up with lots of different variants. I don't know how many of you are using them, but yes, I'm using it and I'm taking lots of advantage from it for my official communication, for my personal work, at, as well as for the religious works. So, you know, voice command, something very common, and it's becoming a great facility for all of us. 
So I tell myself on to type certain things for me. I tell myself on, you could even tell your, you know, home appliances and your electronics and various other things. And soon, inshallah, to your cars and your devices to move on as you give a, uh, give a command and they will, they will be following you. Uh, bio acoustics, or I call it AL, like you have AI, which is the animal language. And we'll talk about it. So, you know, some of the technologies, uh, they, they are amazing. They are miracles. And we need to see to them uh, what do they offer for us. And then robotics and sensor fusion. You know, the cars, will there be self-driving cars? They're already there. Machine learning and deep learning, we'll talk about it. So big data analysis, lot, lots of algorithms, image generators. You speak to the technology, you tell them now it's on your cell phone, on your Facebook. So you could get lots of images uh, created for you as of your choice and of yourself even. You know, imagine what technology is doing. You could see yourself uh, 40 years back or you could see yourself 40 years ahead, uh, you know, or you could see yourself uh, probably uh, Mr. Kashi would like to wear uh, a Nigerian getup or you could like to wear a Pakistani a Pakistani or a, you know, any other get up in the world. So these technologies are there every day. We could even play with them. Holograms, three-dimensional images. We are reaching to the any part of the world. Right now I'm sitting with you. I'm still, you know, two-dimensional. But place, it's been used. Google lenses. You know, you look at a building and it tells you which building is it. You know, it tells you the entire history of it. You could recognize images. Imagine what level of knowledge and information we are dealing with nowadays. And many technologies, James Webb Space Telescope. I don't know how many of you are aware about it. By the way, I'll be happy to interact with you. I, I, I actually don't want to act like a university professor who speaks one way and doesn't let the students uh, get into the class activities. So let me know in the chat box, how many of you are aware of the James Webb Space Telescope? JWST. Have you seen its images? Do you know something about it? You know, whenever I talk about James Webb Space Telescope, it reminds me probably I number four of the Surah Mulk, where Allah says, you know, whatever deeper uh, images and the depth of the universe you would go, your sight would go, it is going to get back failed. So in fact, one way or the other, it is testifying whatever the Quran says about Allah's hikmat and wisdom. So I want you all as a Muslim to explore these things. You know, since the day I've come to know it, I put, uh, I follow it up, all the images coming through it and whatever it's, it's defining the world in a newer way and actually testifying, you know, whatever the science, the different theories and models, the science was establishing and determining for us, they're all failing the life of the earth, the life of the universe, the life of the galaxies, the black holes, all are being redefined. But the sad part is the Ummah is not aware. Our youngster, you and me, I, I can see in the chat box, most of you saying no. So, you know, brothers and sisters, it's time to sensitize ourselves about these technologies. And I'll, there's nothing uh, wrong about them. They are not non-Muslim or the non-believer. Technology itself is not a non-believer. Augmented reality, 3D images and AR glasses, which you, you know, you see the world in a very different way. Probably the way Allah would like you to see it and see deeper down, understand the wisdom uh, behind certain phenomena of the world. So I mentioned in Quran how they have been protected. So we'll see to different the, how the cyber security creates the layers to, uh, you know, uh, protect you and me and our devices. So from the viruses, hacking and cyber uh, threats. So we'll see to it what Quran says about these technologies, nanotechnology, something which is amazingly coming to the rescue and service of the humanity, especially in the medical sciences. So carbon nanotubes are getting into your body, taking the medicine to the exact spots where probably the cancer cells could be, you know. So what confusion do we have about the use of such technologies? And why do we have any confusions about it? Because Allah does mention in Quran, Allah did mention an example of 
uh, mosquito, which I'm going to share soon with you. Why did Allah mention that? 1400 years back, the humanity could not understand the wisdom. Of course, it was the greatest wisdom of the creator of the universe. So today we get some insight to the uh, to this mention of this very little creation cre cre creature of Allah, uh, you know, at that time. So, and there, there could be lots of other technologies which we should expect also. Uh, and the Quran gives the references. I wish that we could be actually the contributors and designers of those technologies rather than just being the users and admirers of those technologies. Uh, time travel, wind travel, from the story of the Sulaiman, I am very sure, inshallah, day would come when we would be doing the time travel, the wind travel, the light travel is, is being done already, by the way. The scanning of the earth through L-I-D-A-R. I, I wish you all get deeper and get to know about these technologies more. Similarly, heart, high frequency active research program, which was closed, but I'm sure it's going to move forward or is probably uh, is taking being forward in a different dimension. Anyways, uh, this was just a little quick uh, insight to some of the technologies. And of course, I cannot speak about each one of them, but I'll try to connect you to how Quran and Allah would like us to take advantage from these technologies. So let's get to see what Quran says about these technologies. First and the foremost important thing, and I want you to have a clarification. You know, you know it's, it's a matter of our belief. Because these technologies at times bring certain doubts in our minds. What's happening? You know, especially chat GPT, this artificial intelligence, it's going to do greater analysis, bringing text from around the world, the collective wisdom of the universe, of the words of you and me, of entire humanity, 8 billion people, they are being analyzed so and the patterns are being formed. So with such algorithms, you know, what comes to our mind? What about the Quranic words and the verses of Quran? Are they really a miracle? Are they really given by God? So Allah gave a, gave a beautiful, uh, I, would, I would call it uh, a beautiful ayah for us to have faith, a stronger faith in the book of Allah. A universal challenge of Quran, which was given 1400 years back, Allah said in Quran, in Surah Baqarah, Ayah number 23. So Allah made a universal challenge at that time. And if you have any doubt about what we have revealed upon our Prophet, the Prophet peace be upon him, our slave, bring any surah of it. What and it's not just a challenge to you. Rather, bring all of your supporters for doing this job, and you will not be able to do that. So, uh, so Allah says, Allah made this challenge at that time. Now, you and me, as a Muslim, we should have faith, no matter what level of artificial intelligence comes or chat GPT reaches. This book is unique. This is made by Allah. Humans would never be able to reach that level. So it should strengthen our faith further that this technology at this greatest level of humanity cannot create anything like the verses of Quran. Alhamdulillah. So, you know, now at the moment, when you ask it about any surah or anything of Quran, it, it gives you the right translation of that and clarifies that this is one of the running translation and I do not have any command on it. So, Definitely, we are very sure. So it should add to my Iman and your Iman that Allah's book is unique because it is created by the creator of all. Okay, so let's begin with this. But it also gives us another message, you know. So that is of, you know, exploring the field of knowledge. How and where? Surah Baqarah once again. So, but I'll come back to it. Let, let's have something more interesting to talk about. Allah says in Quran, in Surah Yasin, and Allah says, Innama amruhu iza arada shayin, an yakula lahu kun fayakun. We all know it. We have heard it from since, since childhood. Allah says, kun fayakun. Allah says, be, and it is there. Right? Now, 
Allah has given many of his attributes and characteristics. They have been transferred to us. It's a common everyday, every, uh, everyday life observation. Allah is Sami, you and me, we are also Sami. Allah is Basir, you and me, we, we are also Basir. But of course not like Allah. So see what Allah has done. Amazing thing. And I, I always say, let's take it this way. We are very blessed people. People, Allah has brought us to this day to show us that you can also be, you can also give voice command. Allah said, kun fayakun. So give a command to your cell phone and it will do what you want it to do. So I tell it, Google, let, 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 let me, if I open the search engine and I tell, I want to know more about Nigeria. So I've just given a command and it started following Here is me. some information about Nigeria. Nigeria, an African country on the Gulf of Guinea, has okay. many natural landmarks so, and wildlife reserves. So I get, you know, the, as I give a command, my cell phone responds to me. So wh why should I have any confusion about it? Why should I call it a devil's device? If, I, if I'm taking, if I'm making it, using it rightly for productive purposes, to, I, I want to open the verses of Quran and I tell, I tell, I give a voice, voice command to the Google. I would like to listen Surah Rahman. So it opens Surah Rahman for me of various stories. Okay. So I'm looking for a certain words of certain, so it, it has made my work so easy. So you give command, enjoy Allah's attributes as Allah has blessed us with so many other blessings. So another blessing for us. So brothers and sisters, Allah says in Quran and the verse which I mentioned and one of my very favorite ones and when I, I look at the uh, the you know these uh, images of the James Webb Space Telescope this verse comes to my, my mind. Summarji al-Basara qarrataini yankalib ilayka al-Basaru khasiyam wa huwa hasir. So then you look again deeper into the sky, into the depth of the universe, what will happen? Your sight will return filled, tired. So Allah determines the limits of the universe as unlimited. Now look at the James Webb, which was the, by the way, tell me in the chat box, there are youngsters also sitting with me. Uh, <laughs> All right. Uh, so now coming to the point. In this, uh, yeah, yeah. So my question is, how many of you are aware of which telescope was the large, the biggest one, largest one before this James Webb Space Telescope? Any response? Tell me in the chat box if somebody knows the name. So it means we never wanted to look for it. We never tried to find out what, what's happening around in the universe. No, it was Hubble. And this was looking deeper and determined the you know, uh, age of the age of the earth and of the universe, 4 billion years and of universe as, as 13 billion years. But you know, this JWST is redefining everything. Now, I should come forward, I should take it, I should welcome this knowledge. And I should tell the entire world, see, whatever you were saying earlier, you were all lying. Quran tells us, Quran tells us that this is, un, you could never reach those depths. So imagine, this is the time Muslims should aggressively come forward, reach to the entire universe and tell them, you know, whatever you were trying to tell us, see, this is all proven wrong. You were saying science tells everything right. So science is, uh, in a way, uh, defying which, which used to be the, uh, you know, the stronger, strong, strongest facts in the past, you know. So, but well, we have never redefined any words from Quran. We have never taken back. We, we never need to. Nigger, nigger, and then, nigger, you know, nigger, Allah nigger. said in Quran, 
Yeah, I think some of the mics are creating a problem. But anyways, uh, so Allah says in Quran, "Kaal al lazi in dahu ilmu min al kitabi ana aatika bihi kabla an yarta dairay katafu." So the one who had the knowledge of the book, so see, it comes down to the knowledge, knowledge of the book. The one who had the knowledge of the book, who he said. So I am referring back to that famous story of the Prophet Sulaiman in Surah Nam Namal, uh, ayah forty, whereby. You know, he asked to bring the throne of the uh, the queen. So, the one who had the knowledge, you know, the, the jinns they failed, but the one who had the knowledge, one of the human being, he brought it in the you know a flicker of an eye. So, see, at that this technology is already mentioned in the Quran. So, I'm not going to talk about whether it was a hologram. Or what? But just getting you an idea how things would also travel in time and would come to us. And then the we were never able to the humans for fourteen hundred years probably were not able to understand. Inna Allah hala yastahi an yadriba maslam ma baudatan fama fawkaha. So Allah does indeed Allah does not shy away giving an example. Of a mosquito, and even something smaller than that. So who knew that a mosquito would have an entire system of nanotechnology? You know, this nanotechnology nowadays, the drones operate on the principle of the way your mosquito operates with little wings. How many times they flicker in seconds, and how do they uh, give them? Uh, you know, give a self energy to themselves, the power. So, you know. And this nanotechnology, I'm such a big fan of it. As I told you earlier, so these carbon nanotubes they're getting inside the human beings, uh, serving medicine and drugs where they are required, killing those cells. So why should we be afraid of such a technology? We should embrace it. We should come forward. Allah wants us to learn about. And Allah, by the way, these technologies are in a way a copy of Allah's creations. So humans, whatever they are generating, they are taking the uh, examples from the Allah's creations. So we should we should say Alhamdulillah, and we should come forward and also look at Allah's creations. Say Subhanallah. Say Alhamdulillah. But at the same time, look at them. Look at their logic. Look deeper into their uh, structures and create structure for the benefit of the human beings. So then Allah says in Quran, you know. We talk about big data analysis. The data has gone to an unprecedented size. So Allah said in Quran, "We'll definitely take your comments and questions." Please uh, uh, let me finish. I'll try in next five minutes, uh, five to ten minutes, because the program started a little late. And then, inshallah, we'll take your questions. وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا سُمَّا رَضَهُمْ الْمَلَائِكَةِ فَكَالَ So Allah taught Adam, you know, all the names of all the things. And they were presented to the angels, and Allah said, "Now you tell me those things were presented to the angels." And Allah asked them, "You tell me if you know their names." So the data in an entirety was also presented, and of course, Allah presented it in a different way. So if the data has come together, the humans are are also following that sunnah. So, but imagine something very beautiful is here. Angels could not say. But because their knowledge would remain limited, they have been stored with the programming to do a certain things. So Allah wants them to remain within those limits, because they responded, "Kalu Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma allam dana inna kanta lalimul hakim." So robotics in this world, robots operate within certain limits. The humans are also able to create something which operates within its own limits. So. See, let's compare it to the angels. So Allah gave humans an idea of also generating something which could come to your service within certain limits, but the humans would remain supreme. As Allah gave them ilm, 
So brothers and sisters, I want you to pick up this word ilm. This is what ultimately on the day first, Allah started with the story of Adam with the ilm and angels and everybody was asked to prostrate to the Adam, do a sajda. So why? The distinction was because of ilm. You know, this one criteria of ilm is very, very important. And I'll talk about it. And today, if we have to distinguish, you know, and then later on to the last prophet of Allah, Allah said, Rabbi Zidni ilma. The story started with the ilm and it is coming towards ilm at the end also. So it has to be the knowledge and ilm which will once again distinguish the nations and ummas in this world. And that's what my point is. You see, so the humans will always remain remain as the greatest, the deepest learning algorithms. As, you know, قَالَ يَا آدَمُ وَمْبِيَهِمْ بِيَسْمَائِهِمْ Allah, as comparison to the angels, ask Adam to explain, say all those things. فَلَمَّا عَمْبَعَهُمْ بِيَسْمَائِهِمْ قَالَ لَمْ أَكُلْ لَكُمْ مِنِّي عَالَمُ غَيْبَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَعَالَمُ مَا تُبْدُونَ وَمَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْتُمُونَ So Allah proudly presented Look at Adam. He could tell everything. So it is Allah has put this in us to go and find the deeper levels of the knowledge. And that's where the distinction will come. Remember. So, and then lots of other technologies we can talk about. I have to come to a very important slide. So just quickly making mention of Palamma Jaya'at Kila. So th this is about the story of, uh, you know, uh, when the queen came to Suleiman. So when she arrived, it was said to her, if you're thrown like this, she replied, it looks to be the same. So looking at the augmented reality, and then she was also asked to put her foot somewhere. And she said, no, 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 this looks like she started preparing as if she's getting into the water. But it was, so lots of these things which we learned in Quran are now appearing to be the reality in this world. So testifying and proving whatever Quran said 1400 years back could also be a reality in this world. Although we believe as Muslim, those were miracles, unmatched, none is like them. But we could present to the other people, see, Quran has said this at that time, something like that is coming to take shape. So have faith in Allah, say la ilaha illallah. So similarly, and when they come, uh, this is the, the interesting thing, you know, a very interesting technology is the bio acoustics now this is the animal language you know humans are ready this year they are doing the experiments whereby listening to the sounds of you know the different uh, uh, creations crea of Allah so they're going to listen to the these minor ants also so and we know from the story of Suleiman again so uh, one of the ant comes and says go quickly into your home so Solomon and his armies do not crush you unknowingly. And then imagine, the beautiful thing is the, the, what was the response of the Prophet of Allah? He gave a smile, meaning by he could listen to it. Right? So the humans would listen to these sounds one day. And uh, then, you know, the, that, uh, the, the story of the bird also the bird came and said i found out something so it means the prophet of allah was able to listen to the sound of it so anyways this is a response of the prophet of allah so the the prophet suleiman smiled in amusement at her words and prayed and then you know whenever we get such things we should pray to allah we should thank him we should praise him uh now, coming to the final words and conclusion of sharing all these technologies and bringing references from Quran, how do we see a mention of such technologies there? And how could we present it to the humanity uh, should be our core purpose of, you know, uh, while interacting with these uh, technologies? So now, what should be conduct of Muslims? I would like to mention here eight points, starting with condition of our Iman. You know, with these technologies coming forward, we should not have any fear, no doubts. We should be rather more clear about that Allah is the creator of this universe and everything we have. And it all belongs to him. 
and it is actually testifying uh, the the realities mentioned in Quran. And we should have a deeper understanding and appreciation of Allah's glory and of His powers, a greater realization that Allah is the greatest of all. Seek knowledge. Brothers and sisters, this is what is going to distinguish us from other ummas. See, uh, please don't take it wrong, but we all know where the knowledge is today. It is with the West. It is with the Israel. Now, most of the technologies, you know, you cannot use. I normally give this example. You cannot use you, most of us. I mean, I have in my purse this ATM card. You know, if Israel stops the banking system today, switches it off, we all will not be able to use our ATM cards. Imagine which level of technology and knowledge they have reached. We are all under their control. And we are still telling the Ummah not to go close to the technology. Please, for God's sake, we need to come forward, sensitize ourselves for the positive use of technology and learning a knowledge which should help us to have an upper hand for, the, for creating technologies superior than the technologies we have in the world. So, uh, and moving forward, of course, the righteous deed. It becomes more important than ever before because we have lots of things in our hand. So we need to preach and reach to people and help them regulate their conduct towards the technology. So righteous deeds, in a way, becomes a more important thing. As Allah said in Wal Asr, in al insan al fi husr illa lazina amanu. So strengthen your faith and then do the righteous deeds. Learn to regulate your use of these technologies and devices, Muslim brothers and sisters, for a better and healthier use of technology. Self-improvement, of course, should remain at the core of everything. As Allah said, and when I say self-improvement, it is and your attachment with the book of Allah. How much do you understand it? If you don't understand it, the, the very first step for a Muslim should be to come closer to the book of Allah, develop an understanding of it. And if you understand it, then move forward. Develop your understanding of the greater world around you. Improve yourself. Get to know. The more you get to know the world around yourself, you'll praise your Lord better. And number three, so generally improving not only yourself, but of course the society around you, the entire ummah. So we need to uh, improve yourself on to how to reach the uh, you know your Muslim brothers and sisters for bringing them closer to the book of Allah. So so social welfare, Islam is a religion of togetherness, and technology today can bring us together much faster, easier. Look at us; we are all sitting together from around the world, learning about the emerging technologies. Uh, through a technology, Zoom. So, you know, it is the end of the humanity. So, we also live in a world where dawa and image building of deen is much, much easier. Remember, our prophet did a very hard job in a very difficult time. And look at the time he was living in. There was shortage of food. There was shortage of support. Now, we live in this world with such a smart devices and things around us and we are still not ready to do dawa and spread the deen of Allah and do a better image building of this deen. We, every day we send 100 and 100 uh, posts, funny jokes and everything on our cell phone to people around. But we are not ready to send an ayah of Quran and a dawa for learning Quran and better understanding of it and advising some, somebody and something or sharing a saying of the Prophet peace be upon him. So Muslims... Think about it. Let's do a self-evaluation. How many times in a day or in a week or a month? What is my conduct? How do I use this technology? Do I advise people for coming closer to Allah and the book of Allah and of deen and making a better image of this deen? So with this, let's come to the last and that is universal human welfare. A Muslim is not just created to serve the deen but to serve the humanity. Allah wants us because we should see every human being as a potential Muslim. Because we have to convey the message of Allah, the oneness of Allah to the entire humanity. 
And it's only possible if we equip ourselves uh, with the right tools. And if we have the right philosophy in the mind that we need to work for the universal human welfare, only then we can bring the entire humanity into the fold of Islam and into believing that there is no God but Allah and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last of the prophets. Jazakallah khaira. Uh, I'm so sorry because the program was a bit late, so I have taken a little extra time, uh, but we could be open for questions and comments. Uh, I would like to thank the entire Masfat leadership, uh, especially the organizing team, each one of you, uh, Brother Imam Salman. He's always very kind to give me, give me the honor to speak to this August gathering. And I would like to thank all of you for sparing your time, which is the most uh, valuable thing. So I would like to hand over back to Brother Yusuf or whoever is going to take the uh, lead for the next session. So, so uh, we'd say out this uh, uh, dua of the majlis after the end of the session. Allah so Akbar. Jazakum Allah khairan jaza. Ma sha Allah. Alhamdulillah. Salatu wa salam ala maya nabiyin Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahabihi wa sallim. Ameen. This is a beautiful a uh, presentation and lecture by our doctor, Allah al -Azim. it is indeed an awesome and I can see very precise and even myself, I was able to learn things more than what I have learned before. Thank you very much, sir. We really appreciate your time. We really appreciate everything you've done for us. And we say a big jazakum Allah khaygan. Jazakum Allah continue to elongate you in this part of Islam. May he continue to bear with you. You and your entire household. Well, I hope well, I could wait. Allah be Allah, Allah be Allah. Then, well, inshallah, we have um quite quite a number of um people joining the platform, and then inshallah, we have both Nasrullah Al Fati worldwide, and we have some of our brothers outside um Nigeria who have joined us in this um seminar. So inshallah, okay, we are moving to the next thing on the agenda, which is question and answer. If we have question to ask our brother, please let's. Try to sit far so that we can ask a question, question and answer session, inshallah. Anybody have a question? We can drop our question in the message box here. Yeah? If we uh, can. I, I think we have this uh, brother Tariq. We, if you we could unmute him. Yes, okay. brother Tariq. Brother Tariq, Allah, Inshallah, Brother Tariq, um, I know yes. you can speak, please. Right, sir. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Tariq Mahmood from Pakistan. Uh, right, I, uh, thank you very much for uh, giving us the enlightened us, and uh, it was a very good presentation. Uh, my question is, sir, regarding you have talked about the uh, productive use of technology, and in the start, you have given the example of Shah Hazal Moz that people are people take pictures over there. Uh, I need your guidance in this regard that how we will link this uh, productive use of technology with the purpose that whether we are using for using this technology for the right purpose, should we stop them over there or how can we make this productive use of technology <laughs> over there? Thank you, sir. Uh, Jazakallah, brother. Sorry. Thank you very much for bringing my attention to this uh, dimension. Actually, that's what I'm trying to say that we actually kept on stopping people from using a certain technology, but that technology has now overwhelmingly taken everything. In fact, we had a wrong focus. We needed to regulate technology. So still even today, uh, although we are very late now, but we need to regulate our uh, you know, attitude towards technology use and guide people and educate them that rather than taking these useless probably I don't call it, uh, I mean, at this point in time, I, I think I also need to be very uh, careful about saying even when people are taking lots of pictures. Uh, so what purpose does it serve? So, for example, you know, uh, we learn every day. So I have regulated, regulated my attitude. You know, my body is responding to taking pictures. It's becoming, you know, so viral. So I've told myself at one point in time, not more than five pictures for an event or something. 
So, you know, initially I put a bar on me for 10 pictures because we, we would take pictures endlessly uh, as if I'm going to, and then they'll be useless. So gradually I brought it down to, so regulating our attitudes rather than, so that's what I'm trying to say. Whatever technology we have in the world, we need to embrace it. And we need to help our people regulate their attitude towards technology. But first of all, regulate our attitude towards technology. Now, how much cell phone do I use? You know, recently I did an experimentation uh, because the cell phone is becoming my all official work, my uh, Quran teaching activities, all that, alhamdulillah, is on cell phone. But still, there's lots of useless time on cell phone. So on this Eid, when I went to see my parents, you know, for the three days, I did not touch cell phone. Three Eid days. I told myself, the company of my parents is most valuable thing. The cell phone is with me, all messages which are there. I know I was not responding to the, the greeting messages. I know some would think that it was uh, probably rude also. But I preferred you know, that time and thought, okay, let's, let's regulate my attitude that on such events, I mean, I, I am taking use from this technology. So after those three days, I took some calls, selected ones. I left some messages of apologies for not being able, able to connect to people, but kept my three next days also more dedicated for, you know, Eid activities or, and all those activities those days and being with my family and brothers and sisters and parents uh, rather than with the cell phone. So just a quick example. Sorry, uh, taking too long for it. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir, for the um, answer to the question. All right, somebody is asking a question here. Uh, the person said that my question is that can we read or recite Quran on cell phone in any condition? Or uh, if I get the question very well, now can we read our side of Quran on cell phone in any condition or condition? Maybe the person is trying to write condition. So can okay. we have the question uh, now to uh, ask the question? Sister, uh, brother and sister, the one who is asking question also, I'm not a mufti, so I can't give a fatwa. But you know what I am trying to convey to you is uh, of course, for fatwa, you could always uh, get, get a mufti in hand. But I very well remember somebody once asked, you know, I have cell phone in my pocket and cell phone has Quran in it, but I go to the washroom. So tell me the solution. And there was a very, very nice and very interesting response from a scholar. He said, you know, every Hafiz has got the Quran in, in the heart. And normally all Muslims, we would have something learned by heart and we have it here. We go to the washroom also. I like that reply. So I think uh, a similar reply could be here. Uh, use it. Allah, if Allah has made it easy to read Quran anywhere, so in any condition, Allah says in Quran, Allah zina yaskurun Allah kiya mum wa kaudam wa ala jinubihim. So the greatest zikr is Quran. So Allah, Allah says those people who do the zikr while they are standing and sitting and they are on uh, you know, beds. So uh, you could, if you find it easy, you could do it. But please take fatwa from a mufti. Yeah. Jazak mullah Kayan. Thank you very much for that. Uh, right, and a very quick one, Shab is the law. We well, once again on behalf of Nasrullah Al Fatih, what right? We say Jazak mullah Kayan for your time, for everything you've done. We say thank you very much, sir. And we appreciate that. Inshallah, we have a token of presentation to you, sir. That is a presentation of certificate for uh, assisting us and helping us out to clear um, the topic we have given to you. And inshallah, we'll be calling on uh, our assistant general secretary of Nasr Life Fatih Youth Wink to assist us in presenting the certificate. And that's the person of Sister Kafaya Sanusi. Mr. Kafaya, are you there, please? Mr. Kafaya, are you there? 
Yeah. 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 Okay, so can you hear me now? Yeah, we could see it. No, Michelle, now we can hear you. We can hear you. Okay. And uh, I, I, can you also see my projection? And we can see, we can see your screen. All right. I would uh, first like to appreciate our guest speaker for the time, the resources put into this uh, lovely lecture. It's really, really educating and uh, very, very insightful. I say a big example from our parent. Uh, may Allah continue to increase you in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and also continue to preserve you for Islam at large. So on behalf of uh, Not Sure Like the Party Society, I would like to present this certificate of appreciation so, to you. I would not want to uh, I would not want to pronounce the name so that I would not you know mispronounce him. So uh, I present to you the certificate of appreciation just as a show of uh, how 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 grateful we are that you could, you know, uh, make the time to, you know, give us this insight, insightful and educating lecture. We are really, really grateful and we pray Allah in his infinite mercy continue to guide you, preserve you for Islam and also uphold you in knowledge. So that's all from Allah, Karen, once again. Um, thank you very much, Sister Kofaya, for the presentation. We appreciate that. We say this is a cool to you. And once again, to our Sheikh, we say God bless you and thank you very much. Welcome to our Catman. So we are using this opportunity as well to appreciate everyone who has participated in the program. We say this is a to you all. And we say may Allah continue to be with you. In a very quick one, uh, there's an information we need to pass that inshallah, uh, coming this first Saturday of August, we are going to be having our Dawah webinar series, Be Isn't Allah. Uh, we wish every one of us to be part of the program, and the link will be well, be sent to every one of us. Uh, let's have our brother from Ghana, Brother Ahmad Tijani, to assist in closing prayer, inshallah. Bismillah. Brother Ahmad Tijani from Ghana. Yes. Brother Ahmad Tijani from Ghana, are you there, sir? If he's not there, I think you can take it, Brother Hasib. So oh, Alhamdulillah, can... wa salam. We appreciate Allah for giving us this opportunity to have this program. We pray that may Allah continue to preserve the lecturer. May he continue to preserve every one of us upon goodness. Bismillah, Shawat al Asim. Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim. Wal Asr, Inna al Insan, Allah, Fi Kusr. Allah, Ladina, Amanu, wa Amil Shawla. Wa Tawassub al Aku, Wa Tawassub al Sabah. سبحانك اللهم بيمدك أنا شهد الله إلى إلى أنت أستك فوك وأتوب إليه سبحان ربك وبالعنزة أما يصفون والسلام على المكسلين والحمد لله يوب العالمين صلوا للنبي الكريم صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم